I'm going to review two of my so far favorite Australian reads and I yes I'll, I'll leave it there there are there are a lot of very good Australian books this year but these two I'm going to stop on um because both are top class um and need your attention the first one up is the Estonia devotional from Charlotte Wood um which comes to us from Alan and Unwin and this is a very inward looking book. I mean, I love Charlotte Wood. I love everything she writes. Um, I had an absolute ball with The Weekend, And it's similar to <clears throat> The Weekend in that its focus is very much on the people and how they inter the, the interplay between them, their reactions, their history. Um, and for that, Stonyard devotional is, is similar. Um, and yet so very, very, very different. Um, you'll all probably have read, you know, what Charlotte Wood has said about what has driven her, um, the, the main drive, the driving force behind her writing this book. And you do get that um, feeling of this is someone who's contemplating life and contemplating where they have got to. So we have our unnamed narrator who comes to a religious community um, out on the plains and um, she has left a very active life of sort of conservation and environmental um, activism and has also you feel well you, has left behind a relationship um, and she first comes for, for a short stay and, and this is enough to convince her that she should come back to this place and stay for a bit longer so by the time we get into the main body of the book she's part of this community community of nuns and um, we, at the beginning she's got very little to do with them and doesn't share their faith um, and that remains a constant. Um, more questions are thrown up by their way of living and by what we think prayer is and what we think um, a religious community um, believes in and what holds it together. Several things happen. One is that there's a plague of mice, and to be honest, that's about the most disgusting thing I've ever read. Um, a lot of people's reality, I know, but not something I'd ever come across in Little Ireland. So that was fascinating how this community, um, what the length, lengths are that you have to go to to try and eradicate a plague of mice. Then they hear the news. That's one event. The second event is they hear the news that um, they will be repatriating the body of one of their number who had left the community to go. Um, now I'm going to trip myself up, so I will look at my notes and my notes don't say it, but she had gone abroad, shall we say, to um, to do community work and is murdered. And in the third, the woman or the nun who is repatriating her bones is an activist nun who actually happened to be a, a, a school, like a childhood, and I'm not going to say friend, but um, someone that our main character knew from childhood. And this is what is so um, captivating about this book, is this Helen Parry who is bringing back these bones um, insights all sorts of, or brings to the surface a whole lot of um, memories. Um, and I suppose it makes our main, our narrator look at herself and look at the way everybody treated this Helen Parry when they were in school. Um, and how very um, self-assured this young schoolgirl had been, um, even though she had been an outsider with a, a mad mother. So the book is about the ways we hold together and um, what our genuine feelings for other people are and how we must try to overcome those, which is part of what the religious community believes, even though there have been the, the repatriated bones of this um, nun who has come back are, um, you know, what you had believed to have been a, a solid, loving friendship. Was it always that? Had it always been like that? And I think there's something about seeking solace, seeking answers, and looking at yourself to see, can you forgive yourself for the thing, yourself and others for the things they've done to you in the past? And it's something in this book, this going to a space. So think of this small community out on these plains where history has happened on, on every level. And all of these major events crossing the stage of her story, of Wood's story, um, and the need to to to... I think to sort of burrow inwards, look inwards, um, 
that the religious community would be saying they're looking outwards um, to, to find the answers. Fascinating. It's a incredibly spare, very Nunes. I know that's been said before, but it really is. Very like Sigrid Nunes is writing spare, um, effortless. You're not worried about too many words in that it's, she just brings you along with those chiseled sentences. Fabulous. And very much speaks to this next book, which is The Conversion by Amanda Lowry. By, comes to us from text, which I've put down today. And I saw this instant connection between these two books because it's a similar feel. We have this same very spare prose, a very simple plot, um, in, in a way simple. I think L Lowry's plot is a little bit more complex. There are more players. Um, and we have a, um, a couple, Zoe and Mark, and um, we, we start out with them. Mark is, is off on this kind of, um, not Mark, Nick. I'm going to say that again. We have Zoe and Nick, and Nick is mad about, um, I knew I got that one wrong, um, projects. He's a, you know, he's a psychologist. He um, has projects which I think are his people are his projects sometimes, but also he gets these fads and obsessions and is always, always, always doing things and is deeply committed to what he does. They see an old church. He decides he wants to for them to buy this so that they can convert it. And he is um, fascinated with the the poetics of as well as the psychology of space and brings this into his treatments that how it, with trauma, um, we will close ourselves into um, a space and become sort of disconnected from an environment and that that healing in one of his theories is, is making you embrace and move out of the space, therefore you're going to move out of your trauma. That's very deeply psychological. But it's a very, it's a very important part of this book because when you walk into the space of an, a deconsecrated chapel or church, you have all the symbols and signs and all the architectural features of, of, of church, of what, who inhabited that space and what it was meant to be doing. So when Zoe and Mark move in there, they're sort of, they want to change everything. There are lots of lovely features, but it's going to be redone. Between the jigs and the reels, um, their marriage becomes a cropper for various reasons, and I won't go into those too much. There are other people who interpose themselves in that marriage, so there's a bit of infidelity going on there. And um, Zoe, and then Mark has a tragic... No, keep calling him Mark. Nick has a tragic accident, and um, we're left with um, Zoe, who goes back to this chapel a year later, or church, and she buys it implants herself in this small community and she spent all her time working out how she's going to reconfigure the interior. Whose interior? The interior of the church. But there's also this constant reconfiguring of herself in the aftermath of grief and betrayal. And into this all story also comes, which I don't think is the, not for me the main focus of it. The, the focus is really how is Zoe going to navigate life without Nick? But, and how does she forgive? Again, it's going to a space to find solace, and these spaces are religious because are they imbued with what's been there before? It's fascinating. Um, so another young woman walks into this story because she's a local school teacher and she wants to put on a play, and the space is right for this play. She's, she's convinced, and she's so convinced that she rem reminds Zoe maybe of Nick. I, I think that might be part of the conversation. Um, and other actors walk in and out of this, and you will have to read it to see what happens with that space. But these are two books that, for me, speak to each other. They're like they're almost like companion pieces of Australian writing, and I think these pieces of writing have also come out of the fact that we have um, known what it's like to be looking inward and to be um, looking at our space differently um, and negotiating um, boundaries. And I think both of these women have, have used the experience of of lockdown as well to examine, ooh, you know, um, how do how do we cope with um, inhabiting space and, and the space we're meant to be in? And how do I get my light? How do I move? Absolutely fascinating. Um, 
two very, very strong pieces of writing that shared this very pared back um, prose. And I think they both float. Um, I, I, if, you, if I had to make a big difference, point out a big difference, I'd say that there's more of a kind of chiseled, sculpted feel um, to um, Charlotte Woods and more of a kind of a floaty sort of watercolor -y feel to, to Amanda Lowry's the conversion, but absolutely stunning. Both of them highly, highly recommend those as your next read. And you know what to do. See you next time.